Uh, this is good, because I don't think I've ever heard you talk about this from Super Chat. What are your thoughts on the death penalty? Am I wrong to think that Canada should have it? Oh, well, the first thing is there's crimes that the proper penalty is obviously death. Obviously. Like, and I've read a lot about serial killers, for example. I read a lot of brutal material, you know. I was very interested in criminology and antisocial behavior, as well as political pathology. It's like, there are guys like, I think it was John Wayne Gacy, who, yeah, you don't want to know about him. I think he begged the judge for the death penalty. He knew himself as like, there was no coming back from where he went. Hmm. So, but that's not the issue for me. The issue is, do you give the state that much power? And I would say, practically, no. I think, and this is a very callous way of looking, I think in the United States it costs $20 million to put someone to death. It's like, why? Well, because the state shouldn't just be able to do that mm -hmm. easily. And they make mistakes, like a lot of yeah. mistakes. So, you got to get your, your, your theory about this right. Are there crimes that warrant death? Yes. Like, violent rape might be one of those, you know, and, and there's certainly crimes that go beyond that. I mean, if you have a daughter, mother, someone you love who's raped violently, and you're not homicidally enraged by that, there's something wrong with you. It's up to the state to take that burden off of you with a sufficient penalty. And maybe that penalty should be death, but then there's the state. It's like, who's the monster here, the criminal or the state? It's like, well, the criminal for sure, but also the state. And so maybe you just never want the state to have that much power. And I think that's a reasonable argument. It's not, yeah, that, I'm that's not comfortable where, with that. That's the, where I'm at with it. I just don't want to give the state that power. So I'm, I'm against the death penalty, but I understand. I mean, I've had Dennis Prager in here who is pro-death penalty and give the, the full argument on why that some things are so horrific. Oh, they you are, clearly. No, there's just absolutely no doubt about that. I mean, no. it, it, you, you just have to casually read the, the proper criminal. I, I outline a, a person in my, in my book. Uh, his name was... Uh, um, Oh, hell no, and I'm not going to be able to remember. Anyways, he was brutalized when he was a kid. He was a delinquent. Mm -hmm. uh, Panzram, Carl Panzram, fascinating autobiography. And he was brutalized when he was a delinquent, raped and, and, and tortured and all of that in that reform home. And he came out of there like, he was a very powerful guy, very big guy. And he came out of there seriously unhappy. And he spent his whole life producing nothing but mayhem. And his dying words were, he was being hung. He said, hurry up, you who's your bastard. I could, till t I could kill 10 men in the time it takes you to hang me. Wow. Yeah, and he said, I wish the human race had one collective neck so that I could put my hands around it and choke. Wow. And those were his dying words. It's like, he was a seriously <laughs> mad, yeah. mad guy, you know, and like there was nothing to do with him. He, not only did he deserve the death penalty, he did everything he possibly could to deserve it, consciously and, and malevolently. And um, that's, I talk about him in the chapter about getting your house in order before you criticize the world. But that's not the issue. It isn't the issue. It's not the case that there are things that are so vile that you shouldn't be around anymore. There are things that are so vile that you know you shouldn't be around anymore. Not the issue in my estimation.